Hey everybody, another video today. We're gonna to be looking at motion inside of our mixes. And this is something that over the past few weeks, I've been studying uh, a reverb and acoustics with students. And um, we were in some of the most amazing cathedrals and churches and castles. Uh, and it just really reminded me how much motion and movement is a part of the, the natural world and sound. And uh, I just want to be able to bring some of that into my mixes. Uh, there's one part of this particular track I'm working on. There's this, uh, this guitar part that, uh, that comes in at, at various places. Let me push play here. And now I know that I this is real. And I've had this in, in this binaural panner of logic. Uh, for since I put this instrument on, I like putting some of these things in the binaural panner. So if you're on headphones, it adds a little bit. I don't do too much in the binaural panner, but I do a few elements here and there. But if you just put it in the binaural panner and you do that, uh, just so you know, if you right click over here on the, the actual panner, uh, you can choose the stereo pan, the balance knob, or the binaural panner. And so that's what I have. And I have it mixed into the rear left a little bit, which if I just solo this out and push play, you're not going to really hear too much of that because the binaural panner, while it's giving us all the, the cues and information to be in the rear left, it's not giving us enough because as we move our head, it moves with it. It's not like a headlocked uh, tracking situation. Now, normally, I would just come through here and throw on a MIDI effect to modulate this in a different pattern. But it's actually really tricky sometimes to route MIDI effects into the panners. And so, what I'm going to do is write this automation. We only have uh, a few different locations where this is even a thing. So, I'm going to put this into touch mode. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a leeway here turn off the solo so I can actually hear what I'm doing here. Um, and anything I do now is going to be written as uh, touch automation because I put that in mode. So I'll, I'm going to leave the left and right as they are and just move this whole thing around. And now I know that I Okay, so now I'm just going to go to the next section and do the same thing. And now I know that and this is real, but this is real enough for me. But is this real? But now it's real enough for me. So it's a pretty subtle effect. Let's go back and solo this out so you can actually hear this. Um, but after we turn this back to read, so we don't add any solo automation. So you can hear that motion if probably if you have headphones on. If you're listening to this on speakers, you might not hear that much of it. But it's just a nice little touch to take this part that's a layer in the background 
and it adds a little bit of depth. It's like uh, in the movies, if you see an explosion, it's rarely the initial sound of the explosion, which makes it sound like a massive explosion. You hear the explosion, and then you hear a bunch of debris, and like the wind rushing by, and other things falling apart, and you know the the leftovers of what happens from the explosion. That's what makes it sound massive. And so we do these little nuances in our mix, give it this motion, and it changes the whole thing so you have more depth to it. This is just one tool, but it's a, a really important one. And now I know that and now this is real. real. Cool. I think that's like a perfect little layer in this whole thing that uh, that really adds to that. So in your own projects, think of the places where you can add uh, some motion, some movement, some something to help with the layers, the layering and all the stuff going on with it. Are there places, uh, maybe it's not in something major like the vocals, but sometimes uh, maybe it's not... Uh, uh, something that's going to be really obvious to the listener, but it'll make an impact. And that's what um, sometimes what we need. That's the exact thing that we can change. And automation is a great way to do that. So uh, for those of you who haven't done too much with automation, uh, you can choose the mode. Touch is the one I typically use. And uh, once you put in there anything that you move in terms of a parameter on this track while you're moving it, it'll add that automation. And then when you let go, so let me switch this back for a second to read. Um, and once you let it go, as you can see, it goes back to the line that's there. And then I made some changes in this one, but I haven't done anything with the last one. So uh, as you do this, it'll just change when you're changing it. And when you let it go to go back to what was previously already written. Okay. Hope this was uh, helpful in terms of a thought process, uh, just explaining how, you know, emotion and movement can make a difference in your project. Um, hope you're having a great weekend and we'll be doing another video tomorrow night. So come back, check it out some more.